Okay, a little rolling. Hi, I'm Kay Cummins, and um, when I first started working in enamel, I was doing a lot of found objects and um, different things like bottle tops and lunchbox tins and things, and incorporating them with enamel. So riveting was a way to get those two things together. And the more I practiced with it, the better I got at riveting two pieces of enamel that are enameled on both sides together tightly and uh, not cracking the enamel. So that's really the technique I'm gonna show you here today. So if you take a look over here, these are some of my enamel bits and bobs and kind of things that I contain them. Um, these are pieces that are either done or partially done, or for example today, um, I like with the enameling to use what I call a ball rivet. So the head is balled up on one side, it's inserted, and then you are just um, working with a chasing hammer and bringing that backside down to where it's a nice flat kind of nail head or button. And I work to do that so that you can do it without cracking the enamel and being nervous about it and yet still get a very nice piece that looks nice on both sides and is tight together between the two that they're not gonna click or wiggle or move. So that's the process. So when you enamel is the first thing, you need to um, keep your pieces really clean. Um, generally when I enamel, I've got two nice coats on both sides. I start with a torch a lot of times and do one side and then I finish in the kiln. Um, that works out well and is good for me. Each time I come in and out of the kiln, I am cleaning out these holes with a diamond file and I'm just wiggling it on both sides so that I'm not getting a bunch of enamel built up there. This hole is for a jump ring later, so same practice there. If I wanted to further refine it, there's just a needle, a needle, um, regular round file that I could, you know, make it a little bit more. I've not found that I need to do that. And you can see from my diamond one, it's pretty worn. So clean work there on both sides here. Everything's enameled on both sides. Um, won't matter, there's a little tiny dingus on the back side here, that won't show. I'll put that side down, nobody will see it. So that's part of having the process work well. Balling up the wires, which I'll show you a little bit later, and getting a nice smooth ball is important. Actually gauging your wire and your drill size when you drill holes is important too. So this is a domed piece and you'll see there's a hole drilled in it. Um, when I use 16 gauge wire, which is what this is, I'm gonna use a 55, a number 55 drill. If I was doing 18 gauge, I would use um, a 59. They match up pretty well. It's actually a little bit lower in size than some of the ones if you would look at a chart as to what matches, but find what works for you. You want to have the wire piece fit in and be fairly snug. You don't wanna see a lot of daylight around the wire because you're not gonna have enough wire to push down over it. So at the same time, you don't want it so tight that you're pressing on the enamel to get it in there. So it's a fine, it's a fine balance, but that's something to talk about as well. Okay, so blue tape, another favorite thing. Blue tape is amazing at cushioning things and holding things together. So I'm just gonna pull a couple little pieces off like this. I stick them to my yoga pants because that's how I roll. And what it does is it takes some of the adhesiveness off of them. And I'll we'll just have a bunch of them stuck to me if I'm working on this. Um, just regular painter's tape. So I have one that I cut really short. And honestly, this is the size for most of the pieces of what I need. You don't need it longer. But when I ball them up, I leave them longer pieces, I ball each end, and then I will snip off what I need. So, in doing this, I'm gonna take and put one on, and I hold it up to the light because I can see where the hole is then. And I'm gonna push this through the hole, right, like so. And then I'm gonna match it up with my hole here and insert it. And we've got that done. 
Then what I'll do is if I have enough tape, I'll wrap it around close to where that wire is, like I kind of did there. And I can do the same thing there. But if I don't have enough tape, I'll just put another piece of wire on top. And I don't get crazy with um, putting a lot of tape on or sticking it down really firm because I've found over time that that can cause more problems than, um, than not sticking it down so much. So you can see where I took those torn pieces and I kind of matched them up to cover that background piece up. Okay, so the height. I've got this pushed all the way up. I want to cut that to less than half. So a lot of times I'll say one millimeter is a good size. Um, I can judge that pretty well. So I'm gonna snip with my flat side of my snippers down or pliers. Put my finger over it so it didn't hop away. And now it looks really short, but this is actually the perfect height, if you can see. So next tool. So I'm just gonna leave that here for a second. Gently, so it doesn't fall out. Um, machine is spiced and chasing hammer. It's kind of a nice weight to it. I like it better than a riveting hammer. Um, the machine is spice is this great tool because I can put pieces in here, tighten them up, but it's light enough weight and it's not attached to anything that I can move it to a tabletop where I can see what I'm actually doing on top. You can do this with a regular vise hooked to a, an anvil too, but I can guarantee you, you'll be at the wrong height to watch what you're doing. So next tool, these are called nail setting punches. And it has a little concave area that the ball is gonna rest in on the front of that enamel and give it support in the vise. They come in different sizes. So I'm literally gonna put it down here. It's gonna sit on its bottom and I'm gonna tighten up the machinist vise. And I keep them pretty tight. Sometimes the tapping will jiggle them loose. I want it vertical. And they do, you can buy these like at Ace Hardware and places like that. Um, they come in different sizes. So you'll see the smallest, then there's a the next size. And then the larger size is what I'm using. You can use these with more delicate work if you need to. Um, and a lot of times I will file off and clean up and polish the end of it just so that it's not gonna transfer any tool marks. I don't think the one that I have right now is that way. So those are other tools. So I've got this short. I'm gonna take that little ball and I'm gonna set it right in that cup. And you can see if I push, if I hold down, but I push on it back and forth, it's not gonna hop out. It's gonna stay in there, which is key. So I've got it vertical. And now I'm gonna take my chasing hammer I need to back up. And I'm gonna go tap, 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 letting the weight of the hammer Bring that down, I'm gonna go in a circle around the edge of that wire that's sticking up. And then as that comes down, I'm gonna concentrate on the center more and bring the whole thing down and flat. So. And you can tell when I'm hitting the wire versus when I'm not. It's a much duller thud. And sometimes it helps to spin the enamel piece just like you would if you were piercing something. Um, and I am holding down on this too to make sure that it's staying in that well. And this can be very zen and it can take a bit of time. Um, I'm gonna kind of hurry this one along here and I'm concentrating more on the top, but again, making circles. And again, blue tape, it's just a cushion. It keeps that um, ball if it gets misguided and hits something, gives it a little bit of cushion, so it keeps things more likely to um, not crack. So if you can see, that's a pretty good head on there. And if I feel the top, 
It feels secure, needs a little bit of polish, but I'm gonna leave it at this stage and I would actually polish it and then pull the tape off. So let's do that next. This is my little um, micro motor, which I happen to love a lot. I use um, just like a regular polishing buff with some ZAM on it and that's Z-A-M, which is just a really um, high polish use, that you can use on enamel and it won't hurt it. So I use that on that and I'm gonna use it on this side to clean up the ball. So I'm just gonna turn this on, just my speed. And this does not have a lot of polish on it, but I'm just going in and around. And you can see it's starting to brighten up. But this is just to remove any tool marks, give it a nice polish. Um, this doesn't have a lot of polish on it, but it gives you an idea. So see, nice bright finish on there. A lot of times I'm, I'm doing this just to make sure I'm not feeling any rough areas or anything like that. You can go on your side. And if this touches the enamel, it's not going to ruin it. Um, so turn this off. Then on the back side, I use a little green all-in-one um, polishing. So this just changes out. This is the green wheel. It's actually kind of a minty green color. Um, I really don't like those little 3M wheels. You can use those, but um, I don't use them for anything now. I did when I first started out. Same thing, turn the speed up on this. And I'm just gonna give this a little polish around the edges and the top. And a lot of times I'm holding the um, ball on the bottom against my finger so that I can feel if it's moving or everything feels weird about that. But see, all nice and shined up. You can see where it, um, burn through the tape on some, but it has not ha hurt the um, enamel in any way. So now all I have to do is see, that was really quick. And the key thing is not to have that wire too long. I'm gonna pick this, it'll take me a bit to pick the, now, okay, when you remove the tape, because it can get stuck down, you want to pull it up at an angle like that away from it so it's not, I'm going to possibly grab and pulling any um, enamel up. I mean, it can happen. It shouldn't, but it does, just like every, everything in enamel. Every once in a while, you're going to attempt fate, and it's going to not roll your way. So on this side, I just got to bring that little baby out. See, look at that nice, shiny little ball right there. And then this last one, pulling it back away. And other than polishing that back piece with a little damp towel or something, that little piece is all set. See? Now this one's actually a little bit loose. You can see it move. That's not a problem for this one. But if it was, I would have no problem putting that back on here like so. Pushing it down and tapping down this to tighten it some more. And a lot of times that can be achieved. And you can see I'm a lot lower this time just to make sure where I'm at. And see, now, eh, still moving a little bit. Well, anyway, I could work on this one more, but I'm happy with it that way. It's perfectly fine. So that takes care of the riveting. You can see there's more pieces that I could do, but I want to show you how to ball up the, um, the wire. So I'm going to go over to my torch area. And I have um, some pieces that I did already. I cut like a longer length like this, and maybe you can zoom in. While these aren't clean, they need to go into the pickle. You'll see that this, this particular ball is a little lumpy, but this one is a really nice finish on it. And as you practice, you can get better at that. So what I do, torch stuff. this is the number one um, Smith torch with acetylene in it, acetylene, um, and that's a fine, uh, porch type right there. So I grab it with the tweezers, get a good hold on it. And I start at the bottom and I start just a little bit above where I want the ball to pull to. So I'm going to hold this here. I sometimes wiggle the flame a little bit and I'm holding slightly above. 
and it pulls it up. And then I hold it in that kind of that, oh, I don't know, the edge of the flame. Doing that helps keep that ball nice and smooth. So if you look at that ball, you'll see it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have a lot of dimples. So now I'll do it one more time here. Okay, in about, I'm holding the tip of the flame, not right on it, wiggling it a little bit, pulling the ball up, hovering it in that area, just outside the flame, and again, I've got a nice ball on that one. And as you get, if you do a bunch of these, you will get um, practice on how, how much to pull up, how long to let it sit. My torch head could have been a little hotter there. It would have pulled them up a little bit faster. But basically that's it. And once these are done, I throw them in my pickle. I clean them up. I take two um, pliers sometimes and pull them straight, although that's not necessary. And then as I go to use it, I'll just snip this much off, stick it through my two pieces and rub it away and then turn around and do the other one. And then again, I'll have two, a shorter piece of wire, but I can ball it up again. So that's it. Happy riveting, everyone. Thanks.